So guys, welcome to the third and final part of the tutorial where we're going to work on just making our textures look really, really good. Add in a lot more of the grunge and grime and detail, stuff like that. So first thing I want to personally do is work on the detail of the handle. And obviously we've got a couple of these really cool references. And we just want to add this hexagonal diamondy shape into our handle. And to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to grab the plastic grid material, drag and drop it. Obviously, <coughs> obviously we don't want it on the uh, entirety of our mesh, so we want to add a black mask. Polygon fill, put it on the handle. Now, we don't want it on the handle either. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to just adjust the, uh, the size because it's a bit too big at the moment. So we're going to put it all the way to 16. Still a bit too big. Let's try 20. Ah, still too big. Let's go. Let's go with a 35. I like that. Next thing we're going to do is uh, sort out. Like, we don't want the texture on the entirety of the handle. We just want it in this box shape that the uh, modeler has kindly provided for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to just erase it manually. I'm going to just click in the corner, hold shift, click in the other corner, click in the corner, hold shift, keep doing that. Until we get basically our outline so we know where we uh, can stop and start erasing. Sure, we're always keep clicking in the middle of the little box. There we go. It's ever so slight, but it just adds a tiny amount of detail. So now the tedious bit is just erasing it all manually, just like this. Now there's probably faster ways to do it, but this is the way I do it, just to be on the safe side. Don't want, we don't mind if we can bleed over into the uh, little outline. It's basically, we only care about what's inside the box, what's outside the box. There we go. That's our handle done. Easy peasy. So now we're going to just make a folder in the top right or a group. I'm just going to call it uh, pistol grip. I'm going to put our handle plastic in there. I'm going to put our plastic grid small in there. But obviously, we don't want it in that way. So I'm going to click on the layer, turn off the color, and put it underneath just to make sure. Oh. There we go. I'm going to uh, black mask this group layer as well, just to make sure it's only on the handle. Cool. So there's the handle done. Obviously, we can add a bit of wear and tear later on, but for now, we'll focus on the other bits. Second thing I want to do is the steel. So what we're going to do is going to duplicate this layer with Control and D, or just right-click duplicate. 
then we're going to rename it steel screws and what I'm going to do is these little indents here I'm just going to paint them paint them in nice and easy just making sure I get all of them the little ones on the here Like one here, one here, and I think that, oh, there yeah, a little one here. I think there's one up here, yep, there we are. There we go. Even though it bled out a little bit, it's not noticeable enough that it will affect our model too much. Our texture too much, sorry. We can see it in the distance, but we can't really see the bleed. And there we are. Next thing we're going to do is make a layer called Steel Grime. And this time I'm going to do a fill layer. And this is because what we're going to do now is going to have this grimy, dirty, gross dust and just all the general grossy bits that would build up in the uh, the corners of our model. Basically, fill layer. Actually, no, we're not. I'm going to delete that fill layer. I'm going to duplicate the steel screws layer. I'm going to turn off all the. I'm going to get rid of the substance material mode, which delete it here. So it's just basically a block color. Change it to like an ugly, dirty, browny color. A bit more grungy brown, I guess. Something like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a fill layer so we're going to right click on the actual black mask itself and go to this little paint can add a fill layer I'm going to click on the grayscale I'm going to type ambient occlusion there we go this middle one here there we are now that obviously went on the entirety of the model and we don't want that so what we're going to do is right click again I'm going to add a levels layer We'll just mess around with this a little bit. Now obviously it doesn't look too great at the moment, so what we're gonna do is gonna take the black one to this end and the white one to this end. So basically we're just gonna reverse where the grunge and grime is gonna go. Raise this I'll put all this this way all the way up. See how our grunge and grime is building up? And then it goes lower again. Obviously, it depends on what you want, but I want a little bit more of a about there. Just it's there, but just barely noticeable. So that's so I'll just give you a quick shot. So that's with the grime, and that's without the grime. It's ever so slight amount of detail, but it adds just so much more depth to your model. I guess that's the way to describe it. Yeah, depth to your model. If you want, just mess around with it a little bit. Cool. The next thing we're gonna we're gonna call that steel grime. Oh, that's not a that's not steel. Steel grime. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this layer again. And we're going to call, move it above the grime, and we're going to call it Steel Scratches. Hey, there we are. I'm going to put the colour up ever so slightly. Just so we can see it. 
and we're going to add, I'm going to right click and we're going to add a generator. We're going to click on the generator and add new generator scratches. Nope, I just did Oh, scratches. Uh, I like grunge scratches rough, but usually we can just go a few through a few of them. But it honestly depends on what what direction and what how you want your scratches to look. But I like grunge scratches rough. Let's use that one. There we go. It had scratches the entirety of the model. Obviously, we don't want them in the entirety of the model. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a folder. And we're going to put all, we're going to black mask this folder, actually. And then we're going to call it steel. I'm just going to go around and... Oh, actually, there we go. It's because nothing's in our folder at the moment. And there we are. making sure we only have the steel in this folder because we don't want our, scr our scratched steel to be on the wood or the plastic we would just want it on the steel basically same as before just polygon fill everything it's going to be in the steel folder. Just like we did when we uh, first textured the model. Now basically just don't have have had to redo the little steel screws again. So we could possibly delete that layer later. We'll have a look after we do this. And there we go. Scratcher should only be on our steel now. We can basically delete the steel screws layer. We got a replacement for it anyway. Ooh. Oh, maybe not. I was wrong. We do need the steel screws layer. There we go, we got our steel scratches. Obviously they're a little bit too big. So we're just gonna sort them out. At the uh just randomly just mess around with a few of these generators. Balance. Uh put it down a bit. Scratch quality quality quantity, sorry. Scratch tiling. Scratch blur. Mess around with it a little bit. Width, put the width basically uh, 3.8. Yeah, 
leave it at three. Scotch dirtiness. We don't want too many. We want them noticeable, but not too many. Double scratch. Basically doesn't do anything. Scratch spots. And there we go. Ever so slight amount of the yield, but adds that just more. Again, just adds loads more depth. Final thing for the steel. I'm just going to make another layer. A lot of steel will be duplicating layers. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to clear the mask. I'm going to put it up a little bit more. Right click on the black mask. And we're, going to, we're going to add a fill layer. I'm going to look for curvature this time. Curvature map. That's it. Yep. And then we're going to add another levels layer onto it. So right click again. Levels. Obviously, we need to adjust our levels. So what we're going to do... We're just going to mess around with it a little bit. We can always move this one up a little bit. Move this one down a little bit. Try and find a balance, a nice balance. For this. And the reason we're doing this is because if we look at our edges, they're very worn and from use one away see here a lot of it here you see a little bit here you can see a lot of it on here especially uh, here yeah Just mess around with it just gonna mess around with it Get to a point where we like. Now, at the same time, we, we do like that, but it's a little bit too uniform. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go to our layer. We're going to go to black mask, sorry. I'm just going to type in, not brush, brush. Naturally, we're going to look in the brush, sorry. Or brushes. I'm going to find something that's a bit like wavy and a bit grimy. Something like that. Or a little bit like that. Dirt splash. Dirt one. Oh. Dirt one. We'll go with a dirt one. Make it really small. We're just going to. Okay, it's not doing anything. Okay, that's not doing anything. To solve that, we're just going to duplicate this layer, get rid of the that and that, and start painting it. Edit, yep, get rid of that and that. And basically paint it on, we'll cheat our way through this bit. cheat our way like it a little bit less uniform you know because that's how it works in real life we don't want it too smooth basically we can change up our brush every now and then a bit more variation in the brush and if we don't like it we can always just erase it 
I want to be very inconsistent with it, basically. Consistently inconsistent, which might be a bit confusing. Go along all these edges, bleed it out a little bit, not too far, not too little, not too uniform. Change it up, brush every now and then, add a bit of variation to it. Maybe add, maybe add lots of grunges, or alphas, sorry, scratches. Maybe mess around with the scratches here. Get rid of it a little, make it a little more blurry. A few of these scratches here. Yeah, basically, just same again for this side. And making sure we're always kind of just looking at our references, making sure we're not putting where where we don't want to put where, where we don't really need where. Nice and easy. Let's go a little bit crazy with it at points and a little less crazy with it at others. And here we can go a little bit crazy with it because in our reference, where is it? A little bit very worn. Just go a bit crazy with it. Especially around these edges. There we go. Again, in our reference. This is very, very worn, so we're going to put a lot of dwaring on there. Make a brush a little bit smaller. There we are. Could do a lot more purposes of this video it's gonna not do too much not go completely overboard also we'll be here all day <laughs> there we go that's our wood uh, steel sorry basically done 